Initiative. Half day and good evening. I'm Adriana Cotero. Well, late this afternoon, Congressman Michael Sinicholas took to the podium to deliver his congressional address. Sabrina and Chris are standing by at the Guam Legislature. Well, better late than never, as the congressman delivers his 2019 uh, State of the uh, Congress address in 2020, Bri, uh, ringing in the new year with. Um, well, uh, I like to say it was like a recap show, right? Because yeah. he complete with videos. You know, breaking down what he's done over the uh, his first year in office, right. talked about uh, veterans' issues and the formation of this a congressional uh, veterans' group, advisory uh, committee right, that, that's going to be added by uh, John, John Rennick, and he was the one, of course, who uh, hosted the congressional town hall that he right. did at Government House. Uh, he also talked about um, compact impact, which you know you would expect in a congressional address. Right. Uh, there were other issues that he spoke about. Um. Uh, he talked about, you know, one of the, the things that he um, talked about uh, was that uh, Guam is now an A-lister in Washington, D.C. Right, so, right. Uh, he kind of used the, you know, the Hollywood analogy to say that uh, before he came on the scene, um, people might have felt, and even people in Guam may have felt that we were inconsequential, and um, he said that him and his staff uh, worked to um, undo that, and he said uh, basically that... Um, now, if you go to Washington, D.C., everybody knows who Guam is, and they know that um, because he's on this um, Financial Services Committee, which he described as an A-list uh, committee, that now Guam is an A-list uh, player. And, um, I think the obvious uh, criticism of that would be, well, if we're an A-list uh, player in the capital, what have we got out of it? Right, and I would think that, I don't know, I'm not sure if I heard that he said that the House Armed Services Committee was also an A-list he didn't say team. that. Yeah. And yet, yeah. uh, during his address, he talked a lot about how he supports the military uh, right. build up on Guam, saying that the military's presence is vital to the protection of our way of life. Right. He talked about China and how China is, is making not, overtures into the um, is Pacific. Not joking, so, right? Yeah, so he basically said that um, he wholeheartedly supports uh, the military build up, but that he wants um, it to be done in a way that doesn't, so that it doesn't um, occupy any. More land than it already does, and of course he did touch on uh, HR 1365, which is his um, his legislation for right. uh, the payout of the reparations. I thought it was interesting because he opened the speech by saying that um, he was uh, very tempted. It was uh, almost like being in mass because the first uh, right. couple minutes of the speech was all about the um, epiphany of the three kings, and then he had said that um, he was tempted uh, to use the opportunity of this speech to kind of like clap back at um, what did he say uh, some of the hostilities that they've uh, been subjected to and, um, and they said he wasn't going to do that and um, they took a line from Mass where he was like peace be with you right, right. so that was kind of interesting well we're, we're done from here we're going right. to go he just wrapped up the speech so we're going to go uh, grab some reaction to to his first congressional address reporting from Hagali I'm Sabrina Salas Mazzadani I'm Chris Barnett thank you thank you Sabrina and Chris you can check out reaction from those that were in attendance by heading over to KUAM News Facebook page and Senator Will Castro is running for Congress according to a press release issued by the Republican Party of Guam today announcing changes to the minority leadership in the legislature taking over his position as minority leader is Senator Tello Taitagui while Senator James Moylan replaces Taitagui as minority whip no one was nominated as assistant minority whip which was pre previously held by Moylan Senator Castro meanwhile says building bridges and bringing people together absent political lines is the best way forward for Guam. He as the people's representative must represent all of the people and work with everyone entrusted to work for the people. One of the lawmakers who voted against the passage of the local war claims payout bill 181, Senator James Moylan, cautions the governor not to place a timeline of when the island's war survivors will be receiving their checks. When she signed the bill into law last week, the governor said the goal is to have the first check cut by the end of the month. Senator Moylan says without a memorandum of understanding finalized with the U.S. Treasury making such declarations about when claims will be paid is essentially providing a false hope to war survivors. Senator Moylan calling them, quote, smoke and mirror, end quote, assumptions. The governor last week said she expects the MOU to be finalized this week. Anti-cock fighting groups, Animal Wellness Foundation and Animal Wellness Action are requesting Guam Department of Agriculture Director Chelsea Munya-Breck to direct her staff to deny certification for any shipments of 
game foul Dustin for Guam, except in cases where the shippers and receivers can affirmatively demonstrate that they are not involved in cockfighting. According to their investigation in recent years, shippers have skirted federal laws that ban the importation of fighting animals by mischaracterizing their birds as brood foul or show foul. A federal ban on cockfighting went into effect on December 20th. The AWA and AWF are pre providing a $2,500 reward for information leading to the successful federal prosecution of anyone found violating the law. A hiker is dead after plummeting over 100 feet to his death inside Telefofo Caves. Chris Burnett has more. It was the Guam Booty Stompers' first hike of the new year. The group has been around for 51 years. And a Saturday hike to Telefofo Caves described on their Facebook page as a medium-rated hike that's perfect for families and beginners. Over 40 people attended Saturday's hike, and they were broken up into groups of four. Tiffany Abwe said she never expected anything bad to happen on Saturday's hike. I brought my, my kid with me um, because I thought it was going to be safe. But then that area wasn't really explored, so nobody really knew how unsafe it was. And there, there wasn't any sign, and I do recommend to put a big sign right there because it was dangerous. The area Abwe is talking about, the main cave entrance to Talafofo Caves. Guam Booney Stompers FB page saying that hikers could explore the cave at their own risk, saying one is able to climb down and explore, but it's a long vertical drop on an old rope requiring upper body strength. It was in this part of the cave. Abwe saw something she'll probably never forget. I, I witnessed this, um, this man fall in one of the caves. The man, identified by hikers as military contractor Ari Shaulik, was next to Abwe in the cave. I was in that area with him. Um, he was holding on to the rope and he fell backwards. Felix Marges, one of the hike leaders, and he says hikers had been warned about the cave. And he said, guys, that thing looks very, very dangerous. Please be extra, extra careful. And then I, uh, and then after that, I just heard the boom. When I got really close to the ledge, I told everybody to be careful because it was at least 100 foot down. And then as I was saying that, he was already on the ledge holding on to the rope. And I think he might have um, taken a wrong step because I hear something in the bottom of his feet and then that's when he fell. And then we heard thug twice. Abwe said they couldn't see the bottom, so they called out to the man. We, we called him out to see if it's okay. No, no sound coming from him. Marges making the 911 call shortly before 11 in the morning. Rescue crews from the Guam Fire Department trekked into the caves with several Guam police officers. GFD also using a rescue buggy outfitted with repelling gear. For hours, crews worked to lower two firefighters to the bottom of the cave. At one point, they even needed more rope. Rescue firefighters Darren Apiag and Clint Cruz descended to the bottom of the cave, which was described by one fireman on the scene as being 120 to 140 feet deep. CPR, not an option, as the man who fell was severely injured on the way down, hitting a ledge before falling all the way to the bottom of the cave. Eventually, Apiag and Cruz able to place the man's body into a body bag, and he was hoisted back up by a crew of firemen at the cave's entrance. The body was then secured on a stretcher, placed on the back of a buggy, and driven through the steep jungle trail to a waiting ambulance just after 4 p.m. Longtime local hiker Dave Lotz said safety comes first, and when hiking in a group, always pay attention and listen. Know where you're going and listen to the leaders. They know what they're doing. For Guam News Network, Chris Barnett reports. A Fire GPD civilian volunteer police reservist was not only arrested, but still had a police-issued firearm in his possession. Court documents date 39-year-old Monty Mathiet was terminated a couple of years ago. On Friday, he was arrested accused of assaulting a woman in Dededo. During the assault, he allegedly pointed a gun to her head. When questioned about the firearm, Mathiet told the police he attempted to return it, but the armory was closed. He was charged with family violence, strangulation, and possession of a firearm without an ID. A woman who was convicted of vehicular homicide nearly six years ago after driving drunk and killing her passenger was arrested again. Majesty Relic is accused of driving drunk and nearly hitting a police car while the officer was conducting a traffic stop. Court documents state the officer had stopped a vehicle on January 3rd at around 3.33 a.m. when Relic's silver SUV nearly collided with his car. Police located Relic. When they tried to pull her over, she allegedly swerved left and right into Route 7A before climbing the curb on the bridge and stopping. 
When asked if she had anything to drink, Relic stated, yeah, only two beers, though. Relic then failed a field sobriety test, and her blood alcohol content tested double the legal limit. She was charged with driving while impaired, driving while impaired with BAC, and reckless driving while impaired. Brian Sanchez Chan walked into federal court this morning but did not walk back out. Chan is now detained. Here's more. Testing positive for meth four times and failing to report to probation eight times. Brian Sanchez Chan's violation history was lined out in district court this morning. Chan appeared for a revocation hearing on his pretrial release before Magistrate Judge Joaquin Manabusen. U.S. Assistant Attorney Laura Sambataro requested the defendant be detained after various urine samples confirming drug use since October 2019. And today, right before his court hearing, Chan was tested and results came back positive. Sambataro argues that on December 6, the government did not oppose his release after the first violation, but that was contingent on compliance, saying, quote, Chan has been given a number of violations and a number of chances. He's had enough, end quote. Chan's attorney, Brianna Kotke, informed the court that her client does admit to drug use and missed testing appointments due to illness and unreliable rides. Further, Chan admitted to relapsing because of a death anniversary. Kotke argued for Chan to remain out and told the court he does understand this was his second chance. Probation requested the defendant be detained and ultimately the court agreed. Judge Manabusen said Chan is unlikely to abide by any conditions of her release and revoked his release. In addition, in Chan's case, a trial brief was filed by the government presenting a breakdown of the legal and evidentiary issues they planned to present. According to court documents, it was on September 16th when Task Force Officer Ray Rengel of the Drug Enforcement Administration went undercover to purchase meth from a dealer that was later identified as Chan. Lab tests proved the substance was 55.6 grams of meth. Chan faces a federal charge of one count of possession of meth with intent to distribute. The government plans to have Rengel testify as well as five other task force officers that participated in the controlled purchase. Court documents further state that the government intends to have multiple video and audio recordings of phone calls and a meeting between the defendant and Rengel. Trial has been set for February 4th. Stick around for more news here on Prime Time. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Energy Solutions, Inc. would like to congratulate GU Self Storage along with Calvo Enterprises in doing their part by going green with a monthly power reduction by over 80%. Power consumption before installation was 39,700 kilowatt hours. After installation ended in 6,221 kilowatt hours, which resulted in savings over $10,000 a month. GESI also offers LED lights, solar thermal VRF air conditioning, and solar photovoltaics. Visit our website and let us help you save. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. I'm in the club.
Off a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Off a day, I'm in the club. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Saying it's time to roll up our sleeves and work to roll back the tidal wave of crime that has risen to meet us. The governor and lieutenant governor unveiled their Safer Guam initiative. Sabrina Salas Montanani reports. Following town hall meetings on public safety throughout Guam, a survey that shows the need for more police presence, the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration rolls out its Safer Guam initiative. A four point plan to place 100 more police officers on our streets and enhance safety at a village level, fight drugs and treat addiction, end the revolving door of crime and hold negligent parents accountable for the criminal acts of their children. The plan attacks the root of Guam's crime problems on multiple fronts, from the courts to the consumption of alcohol. We will be proposing a change to the way alcohol is sold at the retail level. The Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration is proposing banning the sale of alcohol between midnight and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This won't apply to weekends, holidays, bars or restaurants. Let me be clear. We make this proposal to curb alcohol abuse at a village level and limit alcohol access during the majority of school hours. The plan would also eliminate parole for violent criminals or anyone convicted of sex crimes. The governor is saying they shouldn't be given a discount on the debt they owe to society. Without punishment, the scales of justice cannot be balanced and those who are evil will have nothing to fear. The Safer Guam initiative also puts plea deals off the table until a victim of crime is properly notified. Without that effort, the plea deal cannot occur. It is time that justice stands on the side of law-abiding citizens. And we cannot do that unless we let them speak. The Safer Guam Initiative also proposes building a new JIGO police precinct with federal funds, implementing 100 percent digital screening of all containers coming in at the port and recruiting specialists to help the Guam Behavioral Wellness Center. The governor acknowledges the plan isn't perfect, but they're not afraid to start somewhere. In the final analysis, the Safer Guam Initiative is about freedom. The freedom to walk through a parking lot without fear. The freedom to spend a day at the beach even when you are by yourself. The freedom to know that you are safe, especially at home. The administration plans to submit their plan and bill form to the legislature in the near future. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matt Tanani. You can read the governor and lieutenant governor's address on our social media. And also, almost $1 million in tax refunds have been processed by the Department of Revenue and Taxation. This equates to 205 tax refunds that will be mailed out this week. The checks total over $810,000 and includes refunds garnished to repay government debts for air free returns filed on or before July 12, 2019. The Trump administration is warning Iran that any retaliation for the killing of its top general, Qasem Soleimani, will be met with a military response. Nicole Killian reports. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo expressed support Sunday for President Trump's threat to hit back at Iran if it retaliates for the death of General Qasem Soleimani. I've been, I've been part of the discussion planning process, everything I've seen about how we will respond with great force and great vigor if the Iranian leadership makes a bad decision. We hope that they won't, but when they do, America will respond. Late Saturday, the president tweeted that 52 Iranian sites have been picked as targets if Iran attacks. The tweet says some of the targets have cultural significance. On CBS's Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan asked Secretary Pompeo if that is consistent with his own message of de-escalation. Entirely consistent. Threatening to bomb mainland Iran? The Iranian leadership needs to understand that attacking Americans is not cost-free. In Iran, members of parliament chanted death to America while thousands of mourners poured into the streets. The nation is preparing to bury Soleimani, struck down late last week by a U.S. drone. In a non-binding vote, Iraq's parliament approved a plan Sunday to expel U.S. troops from the country. Iraq's prime minister is expected to sign the draft bill to make it final. In Iraq, even, where people were protesting against the Iranian-backed militias, that anti-Iranian effort now seems to have transformed 
as we've seen the images in over the last 24 hours into anti-American activity. In another development, Iranian state television says the country will no longer abide by any of the limits of its 2015 nuclear deal. Senator Lindsey Graham, one of President Trump's closest allies, reportedly will urge him to lay out a path to de-escalation with Iran. Graham, who spent time with the president in recent days, says he wants the president to be seen as strong but reasonable. And the situation in Iran has prompted the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to issue what's called a bulletin as part of the National Terrorism Advisory System. The bulletin is one of three advisories issued by the NTAS, the other being an elevated alert and imminent alert. The bulletin issued on Saturday provides information on the change threat landscape as a result of the Iran situation. It also warns of the possibility of retaliation. Guam Homeland Security Advisor Tim Ogden says although there is no specific credible threat to the U.S. at this time, DHS is actively monitoring and preparing for any threat. The advisory is in effect until January 18th. Keep it here. Dave Delgado is next with sports. Every day, a plus. Attention Guam business owners. Green Energy Solutions would like to help you save on your power bill. We supply various LED lighting, energy efficient air conditioners, solar thermal VRF systems, and solar panels. You can count on our product warranty and quick turnaround and immediate response service. GESI has saved other local businesses over 80% off their power. Call us to see how much we can save your business. Call us today at 647-8111 or visit GESIGuam.com for more information. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. On the show tonight, championship basketball from the Tumuning Gym and the National Training Center in Teason, along with early bird registration news on Trench Kids and Trench Challenge. Check it out. ABC stores undefeated at 8-0, taking on Team Tatua in the men's rec division title game. Tatua down 31-26 at the half. Sean Biven cutting back door off the inbound from Rico Gerlin. Tip ball goes to Harold Gerlin. Banks open. He cashed in for two points. ABC went on a 17-6 run to go up 43-37. Jesse Cruz draws the double team. Nice dish to Jonathan Pritchett for the bucket. He was the third leading scorer on the team with eight points. Russell Manabad with the bounce pass to Linnell Manalo blocked on his first attempt, but gets the rebound and takes it straight up. Team high 13 for Manalo. Back down court, Chris Camacho goes to work, attacking the basket and gets the tough finish at the rim. ABC stores John Aquino dribbles to the top of the key, pass to Sean Biven, who was wide open in the corner. Basket's good from long distance. Tatua chipped away at the lead. Camacho drives and gives it up to Jesse Cruz who ties the game at 46. Two seconds left in the game. Inbound play from the opposite end of the court. Manalo to Biven, who takes it straight to the rim for the finish as time expires for the game winner, 48 to 46. <laughs> ABC's Russell Manabat was named MVP. Teammate Linnell Manalo received the top scorer award. Bank of Guam edged out micro friends 60 to 50 for the co-ed division championship title. EJ Cruz led all scores in the win with 26 points. Cruz was also named MVP and was awarded the top scorer award. Preseason JV basketball championship game at the National Training Center in Teason. St. Paul taking on JFK. Warriors push the ball off the miss. Jacob Miranda goes up for the lay-in. JFK working the ball inside. Jacoby Kanata bounce pass inside the paint, almost turns the ball over. Kirsten Guzman muscles his way in for the score. St. Paul up early behind a couple of quick transition baskets. Sander Sanchez with the basket and one. Three-point play the long way. 
Karo Vinka calling for the ball as he was cutting to the rim. Kanata with the feed. St. Paul working the ball around. Inside and back out for the three-point shot by Sanchez is all net. Islanders win by two, 41 to 39. Vinka goes right and finds Varel Cruz setting up in the corner. Cruz pulls up and hits the three, showing his range. Early bird registration for Guam's obstacle course races. Trench Kids and Trench Challenge open January 1st with the option to ensure entry fee for the first time since its inception and the first time on Guam, athletes and participants will now have the ability to purchase entry protection insurance for the event from FanShield. This will provide athletes the opportunity to receive a refund of their entry fee in the event of injury or other significant life events which may prevent them from attending trench races. Trench Kids and Strider Racing is scheduled for Sunday, March 26 at the Governor Flores Epa Beach Park as part of the second annual GVB Coco Kids Fest. Trench Kids 2020 early bird rate $25. Regular rate is $30. Late registration starting March 1st goes up to $40. Strider Race 2020 early bird rate $20. Regular rate is $25. Late registration starting March March 1st goes up to $30. You can register at TrenchEvents.com. Adulting isn't so hard when you have a mobile plan that lets you live your best life now. With Dogoa Pacific's Gen Z Club, pay as low as $50 a month when you bring your own phone. Get endless access to your favorite apps like Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and more. Plus endless local talk, text, and 15 gigabytes of data for everything else. Everything you need to live your best life. Join the Gen Z Club today. Some conditions apply. Docomo Pacific, better together. Morning, two coffees and uh, four orders of those new donut sticks. You must really love these donut sticks. I do, but they're not for me. They're uh, for them. I will take a coffee though. Introducing new cinnamon sugar donut sticks from McCafe, made fresh every morning. It's a little sweet to go with your coffee. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. All right, everybody, let's roll into this week's birthday shout outs by saying, everybody at the same time now, happy birthday to Liam Cole Pablo de la Cruz. It is Liam's fourth birthday, and we celebrate alongside you, your family, and your friends. Also, happy belated birthday wishes to Roland Rosario Sr. Happy birthday number 69 coming from all of your family. Roland was born on the 4th. Also, happy birthday to Shay Ann Mercy Regis Lazama. She was born on January the 3rd. And Joseph J. Cruz II was born on the 3rd as well. And Joseph also celebrates a birthday today. So for the four of you, we wish each and every one of you the happiest of birthdays. Have a great day. Remember, you can be part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KOAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on the news desk, but stay tuned. Cruising with KYM is next. Jason has Governor Lou Leon Guerrero in the passenger seat. Closed captioning is brought to you by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Visit GESIGuam.com or call 647-8111 for more details on how we can help your business save money. Buy with confidence is the Triple J Advantage. One-year maintenance, one-year tire and 